Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, the excellent Will Ruff for DJ Lunchbox of the Mayhem Show joins us to get techie as we talk about Facebook Home, a few other things, what's really important to you to get your job done, and so much more. Awesome Cast. It's the Awesome Cast, Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get geeky with the guys here today, and just recovering from my trips to New York City for WrestleMania, of course, we'll get into a little bit of that in a little bit, uh, but in the meantime, uh, still joining us from his cave, his man cave, what up? is Chachi, the die roll of awesome, at Chachi says, and insert coin to begin dot That's com. Right. Should I explain the die roll of awesome? You know, we should we should mention that. We, okay, so you've been doing this experiment, and we've been talking it's about not, it. Well, it's not even an experiment. It happened on accident. It's turned into quite the experiment. I uh, Okay, so for the past uh, four, five months mm-hmm. now, uh, every morning, once a day, I will roll a 20-sided die, and that'll be the, uh, the number of the day. Um, at first, it was done as a... Uh, how do I, uh, some kind of, uh, predictor of how the day is going to go. A personal, a personal die roll, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, and I just happened to, uh, put it on Twitter. Or, I, then I gave it a hashtag. And then people, I didn't ask them to guess the number. <laughs> they just started doing it. And so, uh, it got a hashtag and a set time every day of when I would roll the die. And um, this is the second week we've done it. Uh, last, The past week and a half, uh, a guy on Twitter at Panster said that he wanted to sponsor the, the, the 20-sided die roll. Um, there was no money exchanged. It was a matter of me um, for a week and a half just saying, oh, uh, the 20-sided die roll is brought to you by at Panster. And so uh, we did it for a week and a half. And then into the uh, uh, at the beginning of the first week, he, he said that uh, on Monday that anyone who – or the one, one person that got the die roll guessed correctly would uh, get it like $1.23. Like it was uh, – I don't know how he came up with that number, um, but it was $1.23 for the first – for Monday. Um, no one got it. And so the next day, he's like, well, it carries on. Uh, today's winner will get $2.56. No one got the die roll. Oh, wow. Um, and the next day, uh, it was um, a nice crispy fiber. No one got it. Uh, a Thursday ended up being uh, $7.20. So, I mean, each day it just it got bigger and bigger. And then on Friday, or Thursday after the die roll, he said that uh, uh, his sponsorship would end Friday. Um, and he had a, a special gift to give away. And so uh, he had a mystery box. It was a um, three-inch by three-inch perfectly square box. <laughs> uh, completely white, no markings. And uh, whoever got the die roll right would get the contents of that box. Um, I will. I, I, I can actually tell you what the what the contents is now, because um, I, it's been shipped and the guy has to have received it by now. Um, but uh, it was a monocle and a pens T-shirt. Nice. Uh, and then and so. I approached uh, the Mayhem Show <laughs> just to keep it going. Yeah. Um, I, I approached the, – the funny thing is I, I offered Sorg the chance to sponsor it with the same conditions, no real rules, nothing nothing real, um, no money exchanges hands. Um, it, it's just a way to uh, get people attention on Twitter essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like, like a cooler thing than Follow Friday that you could do. Yeah, right. Um, and at last, uh, and so far, we're doing a week at a time. Um, after after Panster's 
um, domination of the sponsorship. But uh, uh, the, the the gentleman that won on Friday, the mystery box guy, uh, he actually DM'd me uh, after I set it up with the Mayhem show, which is going on this week. Um, and he was like, hey, I would like to pay my good fortune forward. Um, can I sponsor a week? So uh, next week it'll be this gentleman's turn. Nice. So we'll see what he has to offer. Nice. Um, but it's uh, because of the growing popularity of it, it's now – uh, I send a tweet out for people to get their guesses in probably around 7, 7.30. And uh, the the actual rule takes place at uh, 9.30. Yeah, I noticed you moved it up because I, I know you were doing like, like, I think, 8 o'clock or something. And I know anytime I'd have to go anywhere, I'd end up missing it. Right. I, and, and that's the thing. Um, Friday, after I got the the second sponsorship request, I, I sent a tweet out saying, hey, would you guys be more able or more willing to participate in the in a, uh, Chachi 20, uh, that's the hashtag, uh, Chachi 20, if uh, it was later in the day? Because I know people between, because I'd send the tweet out at 7, and then I'd rule the day said 8. And so, I mean, it, people are busy. People have to work. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the response, the overall response was, yeah, if it was later in the day, uh, more people would guess. And they weren't lying. Uh, uh, the hits on the Chachi 20 aren't like uh, super popular website hits. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, I have no real way of tracking the stats on it. Just really? Be, I mean, I can go and I can count uh, how many... Uh, hashtags there are, but people don't use the hashtags. Yeah, not always. They just at you, right? Right. Uh, most of the time, they're just adding me. Um, so I can't really, <laughs> I can't really track the stats. But I, I'm getting uh, on the mystery box day. I got uh, 20 guesses. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, it's been 10 to 12 every day. But that's still a lot of people getting active. Like, like you were well, asking I me. Mean, if we knew, if, if, if you look at what the, the concept is. Mm -hmm. That's a, a that's a huge amount of people getting active. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, when you're looking at Facebook stuff, if you, if, you know, unless you're somebody that, that, that's like a Lady Gaga or a Pepsi or something, getting 20 shares like on a Facebook page or something is kind of like really good. Because I mean, right. if, if you look at like what something like that happens, uh, and then you see like the reach graph in, in Facebook, and we don't have those kind of tools, uh, at least that you know you or I are into uh, for Twitter, but you see that kind of reach, reach graph, like all those people just uh, you know added you or added the Mayhem Show when you were doing the promo promotion the last couple of days. Um, and really, that's the thing because all I'm doing for the sponsorship is I'm sending out a tweet mm -hmm. or every tweet I send out with the Chachi Twenty tag mm -hmm. uh, in in trying to get people to guess or. Um, just sending a tweet out reminding them that they can guess for today it, it, it's 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 really simple i mean all i'm doing is uh get your guesses in for today's uh chachi 20 brought to you by so and so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um sometimes it'll have a, a funny comment depending on what who, who or what it is but i mean for the most part it's just a mention and uh, the thing is, most people, when they're guessing, will hit reply all because it's easy. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, Panster, uh, the first sponsorship guy, said that he got probably 30 follows from it. Nice. Um, and I've noticed, I noticed a lot of at least new ads. I've noticed a couple new, uh, and we've only gone, again, two days with it. Right. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, and it's an interesting, like, uh, they, did, did he intentionally take the first week, or was that just because nobody won it? What's that? What, did he intentionally take the entire week, or was that just because nobody won it? It was just because days? no one won. Okay. So, I mean, so. I just I just kept it going because no one had won. Nice. So, um, as a sponsor, you kind of hope that nobody wins for a few days to give you more uh, awareness. Well, at least I, I, as far unfortunately as for goes. you. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I have this guy lined up for next week. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it is a cutoff. Yours will end Friday. Yeah, and it kind of needs to. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and and the mentions is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't expect you to get a lot of follows from it because of what the Mayhem show is. Yeah, yeah. But still, it's um, still something, you know? Right. And it, it's getting the name out there, which ultimately is important. Mm-hmm. It's all word and mouth. Well, right. an- another guy who, uh, who, who who's... No, I have no no segue for this. It's DJ Lunchbox. It's Will Rutherford. Join us again. Hi. He's like uh, Wile E. Coyote, but with better organizational skills, I, I hear. That's very true. And uh, I am also on Twitter. The end. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm here. <clears throat> Up is down. Black is white. Uh, reality is a mystery to me, and I'm loving it. I'm on the awesome cast. I don't know what's going on. Here I am. Uh, awesome cast. Normally on the Mayhem show. Going to do the Mayhem show later, but I thought I'd drop in and talk a little tech. Awesome, awesome. He's a good guy to geek out with us, and of course you can geek out with us too. We're at awesomecast.com. Check out all the past episodes, info on this one. Contact at awesomecast.com to email us. Tweet us at awesomecast. We also have a page on Facebook as well as your Google Plus. So please drop in there with any comments. Let us know, uh, you know, stories for the week. Comment on the ones that we're putting out there that we think we want to talk to for the week. All that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, let, let, let's see. It. And let's geek out. First, let's see what our awesome thing of the week is. Uh, for me, I, I kind of have a, mine's kind of a survival tip for this week. <laughs> uh, I, of course, I, I made a trip this weekend for uh, to New Jersey slash New York City. Because, uh, you know, I love driving around all those areas. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, and uh, and and so there's a few tool, a couple tools uh, that that got worked in here. Um, one, I, I I've always been a big uh, proponent of the best tool for the job. Um, uh, I don't know if I talked about much on here uh, Waze uh, versus Google Maps or anything like that, but uh, Waze is kind of my standby whenever I'm going to a gig here around town or have to go anywhere around town to as my kind of traffic avoidance system. Uh, don't do it in New Jersey. Don't do it in New Jersey. Uh, well, anytime you need to turn right or left, there's usually like some kind of uh, ramp when you think there should just be an intersection. Uh, and it doesn't warn you in time. Uh, Google is a lot more affluent in the ways of the Jerseyans. Uh, so, so I want to say if you're in New Jer- ever in New Jersey, dump the ways. Don't even try Maple Maps because I was in a, in, in a spot. Maple Maps. App, the Maple Maps. Because uh, I was in an instance, instance where I was driving. I'm like, oh, crap. I need to get directions to this thing because this one didn't work out or I, we, we couldn't use a tunnel or something. Uh, so I went, you know, I just seried it and, and, and that was just a train wreck. I went up and down the same like highway like three times and, and found myself on a turnpike and it was just horrible. So, um... So yeah, so there's that. Uh, so yeah, just don't just, go to New Jersey. Don't go to New Jersey story. is really my awesome thing of the week. Is everything except for New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so not terribly. Wait, so yes. Uh, before we move on, I mm-hmm. just have one question. Mm-hmm. At this point in time, mm-hmm. are you set, willing to say that you would go to Nebraska before you went back to New Jersey? Sight unseen, yes. Hmm. Well, I bet you it's flatter, less tools. Well, I wouldn't have the left problem, right? It'd be easy to get around. I'm okay yeah. with sparseness. I'm from the country. So, you know, so there's that. Uh, so, uh, you heard it here first. Sorg would rather go to New Jer- or Nebraska than New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate we have to go through there to get to New York City. Um, <laughs> and other than that, also, Evernote was awesome to, like, actually, like, you know, track my expenses for the trip, too. Because I actually have all the receipts, except for the ones I left in my console that I still need to grab. But like, <laughs> like, but I still have the ones from the beginning of the trip that I know any other time would not have made it. I've tried retaining receipts uh, just for trips to go to high school football around the area. Never made it, right? They just get lost. But to be able, the ability to just be like, you know, you kind of make that stop or, you know, okay, we went to the gas station. And before I take off, I go, okay, bump, you know, and, and pull up your Evernote. Hit the thing. Now I have all my receipts, and I just throw away the receipt. Right? It's in the phone. It's up in the cloud. We're good. Right? right. So I, I mean, it's really cool for stuff like that. So it's def- How to Survive New Jersey, the best-selling novella by Mike Sork. Thank you. <laughs> if you're in New Jersey, <laughs> exit immediately. <laughs> if you find yourself traveling to New Jersey, 
I uh, turn around. Exactly. So, so there you go. Um, also, I, 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 I oh, no, 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 we won't get into that. Uh, Chachi, what's your awesome thing of the week here? Uh, I, I, it's been a really busy week at work, so I don't have one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will comment, and I can't seem to find the button anymore because it seems to have disappeared. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've been using Feebly to replace um, Google Reader. Mm-hmm. Um, it, first off, it, it, the switch was seamless. Um, there was no nothing uh, to it at all. <laughs> it's like, would you like to import the RSS from Google Reader? And I'm like, why? Yes, I would. Thank you, Feedly. Like, I, I treated it like a butler. It, Feedly's my butler now, <laughs> um, with the exception that it won't uh, it won't make me sandwiches. Mm. Um, but uh. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Sorg and I were discussing it before the show, and I was trying to show him the button. Uh, but for a brief moment of time, there was a button in Feedly that I thought at first was a highlighter, and it turns out it wasn't a highlighter. It was a scrubber. Um, what it would do is it would take all of the links out and all of the uh, the pictures and basically break it down to just text, mm-hmm. which made it amazing for uh, quickly downloading and accessing these stories and reading them on the go. Um, unfortunately, I can't find that button anymore. <laughs> um, and, and it may just be because uh, all of the stories don't have them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was there for a brief moment, and I loved it. So, uh, yeah, as far as, uh, and I know this is beating the horse to death again, um, but if you need a replacement for Google Reader, um, Feedly is the way to go. I kind of go, still go to, and I, yeah, I'm addicted to Feedly too, but it really feels like, like the Google Reader going away is like the best thing to happen. Uh, because now we're exposed to something like this. Because, I mean, I've always been weary of going with a flip book or something else like that, you know, sometimes because it's like, well... But is it going to be around, and how does it interface, and is it seamless? This this has really forced our hand, and now we're, like, hopefully using something better, you know, right. in the long run. something that, the, Rather than something that hasn't been updated for how long, you know. Right. So. Well, it, and you know what? You can say that all you want. Mm-hmm. Google Reader didn't need an update. You want to know why? Google Reader just worked. It did. It did. <laughs> I mean, I, you would open Google Reader. There's your, your subscriptions. Uh Star, Mark Alls Red, whatever you wanted, it was right there, and it worked out perfect. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. Uh, DJ Lunchbox, do you have one lined up here, sir? I do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I was uh, I was recently exposed to a uh, a new app. Um, I use the iPhone app, but there is a, a, a an Android version as well. It's called 8Tracks, the number 8, T-R-A-C-K-S. And uh, it, it's similar... I guess it's similar to to a few apps that already exist, basically other users making playlists for you. Um, what I really enjoy on it is the explore function. And I don't know if you can – nope, you can't because you clicked away from me. Um, oh, oh, basically you what you do is you click, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you click like a key – you tap a keyword. Yeah. That's the uh, poorly viewed list of keywords there. Uh, and then let's say we want to hear some ambient and then it will narrow it down and give you uh, another list of – a shorter list of keywords. And then you find out what kind of ambient you want. And based off of that – um, it will help you select a playlist to listen to, and so far it's it's been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a great music discovery tool for me, um, which I've been sorely lacking in my life lately because I don't listen to the radio at all. Um, and uh, for the most part, so far it seems like the playlists I've come across people have pretty good taste. Um, I mean, there's of course there's always going to be misses in a um, in a in a user created situation like that, but I think it's great. It's free. It's uh, free on iPhone, free on Android. The number eight T R A C K S, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Now, now, does it feel like it has everything? Like, what what would make this? Uh, you know, uh, other than the actual kind of playlist system, uh, what would make this kind of more uh, likely than than using um, you know Pandora? Um, well, it does have some of the drawbacks that Pandora has. You can only skip like X amount of songs. Okay. Um, like I think it's like four songs per playlist mm-hmm. that you can only skip. Um, 
And uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a heavy Spotify user, and I, this isn't going to replace Spotify because you can't – Spotify is for listening for more specific things. Yeah. Um, and if it was – you can – if there's a song you like, you can star it and refer back to it later. And you can either – there is links to download it um, on iTunes or listen to it on YouTube or, or anything like that. And um, I haven't experimented with actually making playlists yet. Which you have to do that through the website. You can't do it through the app. Um, so uh, I mean, it, it's got its drawbacks, but I like it. I like it better than Pandora so far because of its ability to like you can narrow down mm. what you want. It's interesting. I, so. I downloaded here like since he was started talking about it, uh, and and uh, like the, the, going through the key- technology wonderful. I know, right? Well, I went to the site. <laughs> I pulled up the site to show everybody, and there's actually a thing right there. Is like. You know, hey, send it to your phone, and I dropped the text, and it gave me the link, and I got it. Boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's going. You got chill, study, spring, hip hop. Well, these are these are just keywords, probably for for lists, right? That's uh, right. Da, yeah. Da, da, you da, click da, on one, and then you sweet, click on a second one, and it'll give out. you a list of playlists to pick from. So I've selected sex plus mm-hmm. uh, dirty. There we go. Sex and, and dirty. And we oh, can geez. listen to something called "Dat Ass" by Smangin. Uh-huh. More what this sounds like. Because we get pulled from YouTube. You said eight tracks? Eight tracks, yes. Oh, yeah. That is dirty and sexy. Mm-hmm. Very right filthy. This is for you. All right, I'll give it a shot. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's, um, I, I ditched the library Pandora. is user uploaded. I'm oh, sorry, what was that? I, I ditched I'm Pandora. Oh, okay. What was that LB first? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm pretty sure that the library is user uploaded. I did bring up the page that lets you create playlists, and I think um, it's a matter of uh, uploading tracks yourself. That's weird uh, that they yeah. would do it that way. Uh, that 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 doesn't seem like on the up and up. If it's that, yeah, know. I don't I don't know. I don't know if that's the only way to make playlists, but that is definitely um, there's the option to do that. Wow, there's um. But yeah, I'm just looking through some of the album covers here, and I don't like some of them. I don't know if I should even show them on the screen. Um, okay, uh, and what were you saying, Josh? Uh, I, I stopped using Pandora. Okay. Um, it, the stations, uh, and it, some of it's my fault. Others is um, I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to play certain artists anymore because of the licensing problems I've been having. Yeah. Um, so. It, all my stations, and I mean all of my stations, sounded exactly the same. <laughs> so I got rid of them. Um, and I started using uh, Slacker. And it's been great. Um, it, it's uh, like Pandora, um, but better. Yeah. Did they <laughs> uh, just... The artists stay the same. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it doesn't move from time to time, or mm-hmm. from station to station. Um you get some crossover, but not a lot. And the crossover I do get, it's because the artists are similar. I just want to listen to the other one at that time. Mm-hmm. And I think they've just gone through like a bit of a redesign and everything, too. And I think they might have a Xbox app now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they do. So, so uh, that's well, I mean, nice. honestly, I've been staring at the icon on my phone mm-hmm. since I got it. Because it's one of those uh, preloaded softwares. Mm-hmm. And I can't turn it. I like I can't delete it. But I'm just like, oh well, you know what? Let's let's give, let's give this it a shot. shot. It works. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I I've tried a couple of ones. Like I tried it last FM up on uh, the Xbox. Didn't really like the mix. Like I tried like Gorillas and just didn't really like like what it did with it. Um, but I, I'm still with Pandora. I'm kind of uh, all in on Pandora. And uh, I, I just really I would love a better Google Music uh, interface for iOS. I would love Google Music to do an iOS interface. It <laughs> won't happen. I, no, I can't say it won't happen. I mean, they've, they've put everything else on there. I, I don't well, see... It's just like I can't get iTunes on my Android. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think Google is going to be a little more amenable to, to push it. I mean, look at Amazon. How long did it take for Amazon to put their stuff on there? Um, on I think or on iTunes? On, on, on uh, iOS. Uh, oh, okay. The video player was on Android for the longest time. I think they just started putting the cloud music player on Android. Uh, I'm sorry, on iOS. Uh, I could be mistaken. But uh, but it, it took a while, but they've got around to it. But I think that's the same case with Google Music. I think we're just waiting for them to get around to it, basically, right? Right. So, 
All right. You no, know, I, I yeah. got to say, I walked away from uh, from all the different music apps. I have only really use Spotify now, and it's magnificent. Mm-hmm. I split I split the cost of a, a subscription, so I don't have ads uh, with my girlfriend, and mm-hmm. it's great. Every every song, I was like, I want to hear this song. I can look it up specifically and listen to it, or drop it in a playlist. It's yeah. it's been wonderful, and a and honestly, I've um, I I used to pirate a lot of music. I do not do that anymore. Mm-hmm. It has completely eliminated my my music piracy. Nice, and that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's great. I love it. Uh, you know what's eliminated my music piracy? What? <laughs> Google. Google? Yes. Why? Now that I have the Google Play Store at my fingertips, don't need to pirate music. Exactly. <laughs> I guess yeah, and I guess before the Play Store, you really didn't have an option that was really made sense for your devices. Yeah. So. All right, we got one, and this is actually a really big news story for the week anyways, uh, from Alex Cars in the chat room. Uh, his, his, thing, his awesome thing of the week is actually the uh, new Facebook Home stuff going on. Um, so they had... It's actually going to be available here April 12th. Uh, the first one's going to be the HTC first. Uh, they had a big press event, I think, last Thursday. Um, so basically what's happening is they're using Android... This is this is base, this is your Facebook phone, but it's not an entire operating system. It's not an entire phone that's going to be dedicated to this. Basically, what's going to happen here is there's going to be a new front end for Android. So all the same baseline stuff. It's going to look a bit better. It's very picturesque. We talked about a few weeks ago about the redesign and how we had these like giant pictures, text on stuff uh, when we had John Carmen on a, a, a few weeks ago. Um, it's more of that just filling your phone from the looks of it. Uh, some interesting ideas like you see at the bottom of your screen if you're on video, that little chat head kind of thing, kind of the way they're, they're redoing chat that like that's a little kind of marker that, you know, I click on that to see how my conversation is going with somebody. Um it's i'm not sure what to think of it personally yet um like i said it's it's more of a front end interface it, it it's only going to be available on certain phones including this HTC first right off of the right out of the gate um they said pretty much you're not going to get something like this on iOS because you don't have as much access to the operating system as Android allows them to to have uh, as an app basically um you can get it like I, it sounds like you're gonna be able to download it if you did like a um, I don't know if it's a rooting or uh, it sounds like if you just turn off uh, and Chachi correct me you, there's a thing where you can kind of turn off like where you get your apps from right yeah like you can you can um, add, you, you, the, the the one that says it's only trust sources like I see this on on Linux a lot uh, like only trusted sources or something if you turn that off you can go to the resource for the Facebook uh, uh, front end app whatever you want to call this thing. You, you have to do it on Android in order to install um, the Amazon App Store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, exactly. exactly. Because uh, Amazon makes you browse, and I'm sure Facebook will do the same thing, uh, but they make you browse to a website on your phone mm-hmm. and download the APK for it. Yeah. So, you, I mean, you're not downloading an app from uh, Google, and you're basically downloading the entire uh, program right to your phone, mm-hmm. uh, and, packaged and ready to go. And this seems like the the big. Uh, it's not a full overhaul like like you get in like the uh, Amazon tablets or anything, the Kindle tablets. Right. Uh, it, it's it's still sitting at like uh, you can still get regular Android. Like this just kind of sits on top of everything, I guess. And say. So, uh, yeah, it's it just it's just kind of like a prettier interface. I, I, I as I was listening to this, I kind of likened it to the um, if anybody remembers the old Packard Bells and there were other computers of that era that had like the uh, the navigator software on top that made all your apps like open up in this full screen interface. Anybody else remember those? No, like just you, just me. No, 1998. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Okay, um, but. I mean, that, that's kind of the feel of it. Or, you know, think like Windows 3.1 over top of DOS, maybe. Um, first, HTC first, the first phone. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, it's going to be $99 on AT&T. Uh, looks like a decent phone. Did I, you I say $900? $99. Oh. 
$99. I thought you said 900 I was about to, to <laughs> crap or break in my pants. <laughs> I'm like, wait, iPhone can't get away with charging $900, and HTC thinks they will. <laughs> Alex, Alex is really down with this. He says he's already trying to figure out if he can afford an upgrade to the HTC first. So um, I think you're already on Android, right there, Alex? Um, so well, yeah, he's smart. Hey, hey. Um... He says he's a broke college student with no job at the moment, hence my dilemma. Then this is perfect for you, right? Um, no, what do you guys think of it, though? What do you think of this kind of like uh, new interface that Facebook's trying to change the Android experience and all that stuff? Uh, LB, I know you're an iPhoneer, but what, what do you think looking at this kind of stuff? Uh, I think uh, I think iPhone, or not iPhone, I think uh, Facebook has a larger problem with focus. <laughs> okay. This is this is something I've noticed um uh recently with Facebook in that uh like trying to accomplish something relatively simple it always seems like every section of Facebook was designed by a different team who didn't talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Um like uh, a friend of mine wanted to untag someone uh, in a photo that she had tagged on Facebook and it was the most complicated fucking thing in the world. Like, depending on how you access the photo, you had different menu options and all of this crazy stuff. I have been dying forever to clean up my friend, my Facebook friends list. Like, because I'm, I'm friends with people on there who, who no longer update their profiles, people, you know, I haven't talked to in forever. I want to I wanna clean it up, but it's the hardest freaking thing in the world. It is. It's ridiculous. It the, is. the closest thing I can get is uh, hiding someone from their stories coming up on my timeline. But even then, you have to click on their name and then click in another menu and then click again, hide from my timeline. It's, the, it's, it's so not streamlined. It's amazing to me. It goes to show how integrated Facebook has become in people's lives mm. because if they launched today being this complicated, they would be sh- they would, no one would be interested. Then that's the problem I see because we do the Facebook one on one classes. We're actually doing one tomorrow night at the library. Uh, and, and I always I always start off with, OK, this is the most complicated thing for you to be jumping into feed first right now. The, the, if you would have jumped into this about five, six, seven years ago, you wouldn't have to know half the stuff about getting around. And mm-hmm. legitimately, I will probably have to take a second if you ask me a question because they've probably moved it since the last time I've looked at it. Yeah. Um, and, and that is the case. And then. Last, which was six, seven, eight months ago, I still had people on the old interface, the old front end uh, news feed. Mm-hmm. Instead of, That's true. Instead I'm of still on it. You're still on it. I still have the, the same same front end interface and I still have the, the, old, uh, the old timeline on my profile. And mm-hmm. I requested to be like an early adopter and they still haven't rolled it out to me. Well, you are on the, well, you, but, you, the, but I'm talking about this part here. The, like you do have the updated like timeline profile page. They're using oh, yeah, the last yeah. version of that. Moved everybody over. Why do you even have this? You know, and not that yeah. they not that they can answer. They're there to learn about Facebook. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's just such a hodgepodge. And the more I get into this, and yeah, okay, the bar at the top is kind of streamlined things a little bit. And and and, and again, they do have a new design, which looks amazingly like Google Plus, doesn't it, guys? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean that. It just looks so – and maybe just because I have so much stuff into this with pages and everything. like, And then, and then stuff changes like why uh, – hi, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Why is groups above my pages when it definitely wasn't earlier today? Mm-hmm. You See, know? You're, and your front end is complete well, – not completely, but it's, it's still different than what mine is. Yeah. Like you have your notifications – uh, to the to the right, mm-hmm. like up and to the right. Mine are still up and to the left. I still have the old Facebook logo. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, they're it's, just not like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Yeah, it, it worst case than than even like it should be easier than what we see with Google. You know, Google at least has different services that have all been absorbed and God knows what, right? Uh, and these guys is like, well, you're all Facebook, right? It's one umbrella, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, now, that being said, I do want to say that uh, with this phone, I'm sure they spent a shitload of money on it. And as, if BlackBerry has taught us anything with this BB10 business, mm-hmm. uh, if you throw enough money at something, it's going to be pretty. 
functionality yeah, remains to be seen, but it's going to be really pretty. <laughs> what do you What do you think of this new uh, uh, idea here of in phones there, Josh? Facebook can barely make a functional social media page. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's their me, business. And you want me to expect that they can make a successful phone operating system that works? Well, 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 here's the thing. The hard part should be already taken care of because the things that make the phone work are still Android, which you are already dedicated to. So all of that and all the apps you talked about change all that should carry over right uh and plus you're worried about hardware facebook isn't trying to get in the hardware game they're going to htc for that we already know how well htc does with hardware so they're just doing the pretty parts doing the social part and adding that as a as a layer on top of things no 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 stay dice. out of my phone stay out of your phone facebook right now the only reason a Facebook app is installed is because it pulled back down when I uh, wiped my phone last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't logged in. Like, I, I click on a folder, and I'm like, oh, why is that folder called Facebook? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, because it's nothing but Facebook and Facebook Messenger. Oh, no. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's only because... Uh, the only way you can get Facebook Messenger on your f phone is if you download the app for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and trying to manage uh, pages on Facebook, it's a joke. It is, even on iOS, because mm -hmm. it's like, I'll pull up a page, and it's like, oh, go with more just to do Facebook things on iOS. Yeah. You know? well, it's the same for Android. Yeah. It's, I mean, you have to you have to download multiple apps, or else you're not getting sh stuff done. Yeah. Just today, I, I tried. There was two very basic Facebook things that I tried to do today, and it failed. Number one, there was a story on my timeline I wanted to share to the Mayhem Show group. Uh, no, I could share it on my timeline, but there was absolutely mm -hmm. zero options to share to any of the groups, Drives me nuts. or anywhere else for that matter. Drives me nuts. Uh, the other thing is, I shared a video. I, I went specifically to the Mayhem Show um, group and wrote a little message, dropped in the link to a video, and it nothing. It, it made it a hyperlink. It didn't make it a video like it does everywhere else on Facebook. Even when I logged in on my actual computer, it was still just a hyperlink. I had to delete it, repost it, and all it was just a simple copy and paste, and it made it the video. Mm. Like that's pretty basic stuff that you should be able to do on the mobile app. I hate that that there are some things I can't share on the mobile app in general that I I can't. I was like, well, I got to sell it to a computer, and it's like you guys should be further along by now. So yeah, all right, that's enough Facebook hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's not. But I'm gonna let you move on anyway. <laughs> Will Will, uh, you had a, a question you wanted to pose. I did. I did. Uh, the reason being is because um, this is a unique opportunity. There's, there's me, there's you, there's Chachi. We're, we're, we, we make things and we put them on the internet. Um, so my question to you is what equipment, uh, what tech specifically is uh, absolutely indispensable to you? You need it 100%. Otherwise, you would be uh, completely screwed when it comes to content creation. Okay, okay. And what, what, and what do you have in mind? Like, what, what, what works for you then? Well, uh, personally, for me, it's uh, it's pretty simple. If I'm writing, I need I need my laptop and I need Spotify and a good pair of headphones. I actually, um, for a while, I was using a pair of Skull Candy earbuds, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find them one day, and so I tried the ear pods that came with my iPhone five, and they're magnificent. Mm. I heard nothing but terrible things about it. They're great. They sound a thousand times better than the the Skull Candy headphones that I had. False. So false. Touchy yes. disagrees. Hold on. It's it, you know what? It's entirely possible that the Skull Candy, the pair of Skull Candy ear. I didn't pay a lot for them. They weren't like in the thirty dollar range. Uh, well, see, that's they, your problem. The twenty dollar ones, they're okay. Um, I, I'm not going to blast them for twenty dollars. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, they right. were just they were just little earbuds. I would. They weren't right. the over the. They weren't these. Right. These are the only headphones I've ever actually paid any real amount of money for. Mm -hmm. They were uh, 
And those those. for audio, those are like like over the ear, like like they look comfortable. They look better than anything I have in my studio over here. Uh, And and there's a story behind them, uh, but I paid uh, fifty bucks for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And my problem with paying a lot for headphones is I often ruin the cords. Mm -hmm. However, on these ones, the cord unplugs from both sides. Mm -hmm. So if the cord goes, I can replace it. We had a few like this because we had a similar problem in our in our old old uh, uh, video house. Uh, but there, we had these really decent Behringers. Uh, yeah, and you know me, Josh. I yeah. Yeah, for soundboards and you know whatever else, headphones and whatever. I think these might be Behringers too, perhaps. Uh, um, but yeah, but they were really good ones unplugged, and that was good. I don't know how many cords. Like I was stealing cords from like other computers, like like speaker cords and stuff you know just to like kind of get those going because they were like the nice soft headphones or like a pillow i really wish i would have taken them and not just a stay for <laughs> um anyways uh anyway, I, I, i've been kind of eyeballing maybe trying maybe get one of those kinds of pairs again so for sure so excellent um what about you chuck uh my phone usually you just live on your phone right well, I mean, uh, <clears throat> no matter what I'm doing, mm-hmm. it starts on my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm tweeting, mm-hmm. even if I'm in front of a computer, 90% of the time, my phone. Because anything you're doing, the, 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 you know, maybe not your, your job or anything, but you're very social. Right? What's that? I say you're very social. Uh, um, uh, as I've stated before, uh, the Trachi Plays website mm-hmm. updated from my phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, constant total updates from my phone. Yeah. Any any stories I'm writing about for Insert Coin or anything that I'm doing for uh, Chachi Says all starts on my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Chris Brogan, uh, great guy. All right. Great guy. However, uh, he does this thing. He shuts his phone off at about nine o'clock. Yeah, and he doesn't touch it until he's already at the office or where he's working that day. Yeah, could never do it. <laughs> the first no, it, it, it's no joke because first off, one of my alarm clocks is my phone. Yeah. All right. So right there, I can't put it on silent, and then. In the morning, while I'm getting ready, uh, while the coffee pot's brewing, while the, the shower water's warming up, I'm reading stories about video games in my reader. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, from start to finish of my day, it all starts on my phone. Yeah, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in that, too, because um, this is my communication device, you know? Um, this, I, I, I'm, <laughs> you remember like, uh, uh, I tweeted a few weeks ago, um, the, I love living in the future cause I just, uh, you know, finished like the rest of my work day on this in the car. You know, I wasn't driving. We were carpooling. It's cool. <laughs> uh, but like just that idea of like, like, you know, you know, being out in you know, New Jersey, you know, New York doing all this stuff and still like, uh, you know, uh, having a fire, you know, happen and one of my other you know the clients and say oh you know uh, yeah just do this you know be able to connect and do that being able to connect into my computer at home to move a file or update a file uh that would be sitting here on my giant drobo you know um geez i, I couldn't even start with a list for you there lb <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would reference you to my cloud article a couple weeks ago. Yes, you did. You did an awesome article. It was basically a picture of your setup with, with each item described. <laughs> that, was, that was good. No, was I'm not even talking about that. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the the cloud storage article I did, oh. where I talked about I use Dropbox for this thing. I use uh, Google Drive for this thing. I use iCloud for these things. Um, I, it, 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 and just that's the outline of the uh, if it wasn't for these services and the ability for these services to do things I would not be able to do my stuff and be mobile and do the, my job efficiently that makes it happen you know I would not be able to be an independent producer if it wasn't for these tech- technologies that I've developed over the last couple of years it was kind of like the perfect timing of I can go do this thing these technologies happened and they made everything easier 
you know? Mm-hmm. Um, my accounting's in the cloud. My, my, my files are in the cloud. Everything's backed up in the cloud. I'm putting video in the cloud, you know? Um, and that's the major thing. Like, looking at something like that, that outline of, of the studio, that's just, this is the tech I have on hand. I mean, essential, I think, is relative there because it's basically no matter what I had. You've seen, you've seen my setup when I had a lot less. Mm-hmm. And I will make whatever I have work. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as that goes, um, but yeah, yeah. you go ahead. You mentioned uh, the cloud, um, and I forgot. Google Drive is magnificent, and I have basically stopped using Microsoft Word, which is what I used to write in. Now mm-hmm. I really just write in Google Drive. Yeah, so I can access it anywhere. Yeah, right. And I'm the same way. It, even on the go, if I'm starting an article, if I'm sitting on a bench in the middle of nowhere it goes on my phone first if mm-hmm. i'm not in front of a computer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that way if i when i get to a computer i can open it up and i know exactly where i am and where i left off exactly I, that idea dropbox and google drive I, I have everything here too you know um i, I just you know some, and then i have to log me in to go to my computer to do something if it's something like oh i can just throw that file in compressor and start that since I'm out and my computer is just sitting there, right? Because um, I, I don't feel good walking away from my computer and it's not running a process. Because <laughs> I have so many things. And plus, I do have a stack of things, of files and libraries and things that I want to get converted for one reason or another for some other projects. Or I'm, I got to think, like, you know, does something need captured now? Does something need to be thrown in a render that's going to take an obscene amount of time? Uh, you know, I, I when I left for this trip this weekend, uh, I sat there Thursday night and said, what, okay, this would be a great time to throw all these files that need compressed into here. Uh, so hopefully I'll have them done, most of them done by the time I get home, uh, and, and and I can put those up for for digital downloads. Um, you know, working with my new system, I've been I've been uh, trying to pull together. Um, it's kind of like that idea of you know, you know, uh, in athletics and stuff, they say no wasted motions. You know, that's kind mm-hmm. of the that's kind of a similar idea. You know, there's no uh, wasted uh, no wasted CPU cycles in this house. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's kind of the philosophy there. So, you know, there's that. So, um, aside from that, I mean, yeah, it really all kind of bases around my phone. You know, I mean, I could change out anything. Uh, I could change out, uh, you know, uh, I, that was proven last week. This is a brand new phone. Uh, I, the t- I, Easter Sunday, the top button started going on me. And I walked into, you know, got my thing, you know, got my appointment, walked into uh, First Chance was Wednesday. Uh, and they're like, okay, yeah, we're placed, da 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 um, And just log into iCloud and everything started pulling down, you know. So I'm not, and, and that got me thinking about this whole idea that we're not, we're very hardware agnostic now. We need hardware to do things. But, mm-hmm. you know, that whole idea of like they have with Chromebook that if you uh, ran over your Chromebook with a car, if you threw it in the, in the, in the ocean, please don't do this. But your stuff <laughs> would be OK. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, generally, God forbid, my house burns down and I lose all my equipment, all the other things, all the important stuff for me to continue my business. I get that insurance check. I go grab a new computer. I go grab a new phone and I can continue where I left off. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that idea is just, just tremendous, you know, that we're not dedicated to that, you know, I mean, I have an old drawer of discs of my, all my old projects through, uh, you know, the art institute and school and, and everything like that. And it's just like, you know, you're always thinking like, man, these, these go away. That's it. Right. You know, I'm not even worried about my music. My music's up on Google music in the cloud. I'm not gonna, even going to lose that. Right. You know, I mean, I could do the same with my video. It's ridiculous. So, um, so yeah, Technology excellent. Awesome. Well, and, and to further the point along, mm-hmm. uh, I will be late for work, and I mean substantially late for work mm-hmm. before I forget my phone. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. if I get blocks away and realize I don't have my phone, I won't. I, I won't go to work until I have my phone. <laughs> I went through pains to make sure I had. I, 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 I'm trying a new battery pack system. And, oh, oh, here's ah, here's your awesome thing of the week. I, I should have mentioned. There's these little Duracell battery packs uh, that you can get for about. I think I paid about fifteen dollars for these things. Like they're just a USB battery pack, and I think I've seen them as sheets actually uh, on the battery uh, stand thing, like in the phone stuff. Um, that thing got me through the rest of the weekend. 
you know, between that and anytime I got in the car, just plugging in for the 10 minutes to the next place, right? Um, and, and typically, and maybe it's because it's a new phone, new battery, uh, I would never have lasted that long on this thing. And you guys saw how much I was tweeting, you know, throwing, you know, pictures, videos, all kinds of stuff up there. Uh, and I got through a whole weekend and didn't have a point where I'm like, oh, crap, I'm at 10%. I better conserve. You know, that's mm-hmm. that was tremendous. Um, but, yeah. Um, well, we didn't really get any news stories today, <laughs> other, than, <laughs> other than Facebook. I'm sorry. Chachi, Chachi, Chachi. I blame myself. Wait, why, spend, why would we blame you? I don't have anything to blame you about. I spent a good about. 10, 15 minutes talking about uh, the Chachi 20. You did. Yeah, but that was a good thing. I mean, that, that was a good active thing that you're doing. And I'm really uh, uh, curious to see how that's going to uh, keep going. Hey, can I touch on really quick video game stuff before we get out of here? I got, no. I got, I got the, what? No. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first of all, the Ouya has been going out to people to the early uh, Kickstarters. Um, and there's been video reviews. The Verge had a video review that I watched. It was like, ah, it's not ready for prime, prime, prime time, da, 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 da. Uh, Ouya fired back and said, no, it's a preview. Of course it's not ready for prime time. We have a lot coming. And there's going to be regular updates, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think it's too early to, to you know, kind of call it uh, for or against Ouya? Josh? Way too early to call it against U- Uya. They're, they're, this, um, this you is... have a new generation of consoles coming out. Yeah. Um, if they flop, Ula's in. Yep. Uh, if there is the smallest flaw in the next PlayStation console or the next Xbox console, and people are like, well, what the hell am I supposed to play now? And they look and they see U- Uya's available at any store for 100 to 150 dollars they're gone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what do you think lb um let me, let me let me ask you a question okay um when sim when the new sim city came out and failed yes uh who who was to blame was it the people who made the game or the people who made the computer the people who made the game yes that's the correct answer. Also, it was a little bit rhetorical. I agree with Josh. <laughs> it is way, way too early to call it. Um, I think uh, if their hardware works, what's what's gonna make or break them is the pe- is the the um, the content creators basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like a big part of when uh, when the iPhone was successful when it first came out, a big part of that is um, because it had people making apps for it. Angry Birds. It had, it had so – yeah, Angry Birds. It had it, – the, the, the crowd of people making apps for the iPhone was so much larger than for, um, for like the BlackBerry uh, that there was no competition. I mean Ouya can come out and it can be absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. But it does, if it doesn't have the – what is the word I'm looking for? The, the developers. That's Killer if it doesn't have the, the video game developers behind it, it'll mm-hmm. be dead in the water. And it's and it's, the whole idea is it's going to be you know open source and and it's going to be a nice place for indie developers. So mm-hmm. I, I think I think you're I, and that's why I think it does go around to you. you need your Angry Birds, you need your left field. Holy crap! Where did this come from? Game that you can get on this and maybe not just yet with Xbox or the idea that all those indie games that we're getting out of like Xbox and PlayStation. I wonder if there's a, a subculture of regular people, not just us like crazy gamers. They're like I kind of like shoot many robots more than I'm like paying $60 for that new, you know, Mortal Kombat game. I kind of like, uh, uh, you know, Limbo and Braid and that kind of stuff. Oh, there's a console that's only $100 that I can just get all that kind of stuff. You know, and granted, these aren't games aren't exactly, you know, lined up like this. But but that whole idea, I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be like, you're going to start having a splintering, you know, of Mm -hmm. um, these are the people that love their uh, $60 uh, Call of Duty Holy Crap games and Assassin's Creed and, and Bioshocks, and then you're going to be like, yeah, I'm cool with Minecraft and Angry Birds and, and, and stuff like that kind of kind of uh, uh, stuff. And I think I think they're, it, if these guys are positioned and in stores, I think you're going to get a lot out of that. And it's definitely way too early. They, they said this is a developer this is a developer release, basically. And just some regular people have it because of the Kickstarter. Right. It got so popular. Mm-hmm. So, and that's fine. So, uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. Oh, me too, me too, and I, I, I definitely foresee having one uh, potentially before the end of the year, as long as there's no like floppage be- before then. 
All right, guys, we've been talking about, we've mentioned a couple of times real quick, uh, the Steam Box covering up this whole idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of curious, kind of want to see where that goes, right? Well, Alienware, uh, his, their latest, where is it at? There we go. Their latest gaming PC has Linux on it, and it plays over 25 games. Excellent. five games. <laughs> so that's woo, that's, that's not a terrible number. Game. It's not no no. It's not horrible. Well, but but it's well. Then again, because I was going to say, think about how many games you actually own for Xbox, and then I thought, no, it's not about how many you own. It's how many you can choose from. Yeah yeah. Well, it's it's Steam, and of course, Steam did did release only recently, really, uh, their Linux version. I know uh, of the almost hundred games I have in my Steam, there was there was like. Five to ten ish that were available uh, to me in Linux. Uh, and it's an older laptop, so it didn't even run all of them, uh, any of them actually. Um, so, but in this case, like this, this kind of idea that you get this big Alienware computer. Uh, I mean, we're talking. It starts at five ninety nine. You know, it gets three point three gigahertz dual core uh, i three. Uh, six gigabytes of RAM, G G Force, uh, you know, uh, gigabit on the G Force. Uh, but it, it you can also get a higher run, uh, higher end one that's a uh, uh, one thousand fifty dollars. Uh, so uh, that's a lot of change to put down on. Well, I guess a bet on the future, and uh, and you know, again, twenty five games, but uh, right off the bat. You know, but uh, th there's going to be a very special. I don't know who they are dedicated. A uh, bunch that can uh, th that can go for that, right? How much did you say the high end one was? The high end one uh, was at a uh, uh, one thousand and forty nine dollars, uh, mm -hmm. and the similar one uh, is is topping out at twelve forty nine for the Windows version of it. So you're mm -hmm. seeing a two hundred dollar uptake if you want the you know, one to two hundred dollar uh, uptake if you want the the Windows version, which touts uh, through Steam. Uh, so far uh, it says about 19 1952 for windows uh linux titles hold on mm. a steam search for linux titles actually uh paints a little better picture here according to the verge turning up 97 games actually available so i guess this is just the marketing it says over 25 games for anything mm -hmm. more because they're like we're gonna play it safe so <laughs> that's that's not bad but for a thousand dollars i can build a computer that will play all of the games on steam you know yeah yeah well, exactly exactly and, and, and I, like i said this is a very special subset this is this is something that will hopefully grow you know mm -hmm. i mean just the fact that steam is doing this means that there is a future in this right and i think it's, i think this with people getting upset over windows especially steam i think you're going to see a very severe fragmentation of the pc uh, industry for anybody that's not in an office especially in gaming so i mean i think it's already happening and you know and plus chrome i mean it, 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 i think i think the tools are becoming you know it's not obvious you pick up a windows machine for all your needs anymore you know um and there's going to be a lot of general users that need to kind of learn them, their ways out of that but uh there's a lot of options coming up and a lot of opportunities to learn something different uh that's better so yeah. Um, all right. With that, I think that's everything I wanted to t definitely touch on this week. We got a lot we didn't get to. Uh, we got all those show notes up there. I've been linking the show notes over there to awesomecast.com under this show. And there's, of course, awesomecast144. Uh, so uh, go see the stuff we didn't get to. If you want to discuss it, go uh, uh, check us out on Facebook, on, on Google, and also at awesomecast on Twitter, or drop us an email. I'm like, why the hell did you not? talk about the Google CIO thinking today's lawmakers aren't best for making tech policy and instead talked about Facebook home for 20 minutes. Um, you know, <laughs> just lay it into us, guys. Let us know what you think. Uh, <laughs> You know, I hope you guys are writing down these titles you're dropping in the, t in the chat. Uh, show title, Give Alex Your Money. Okay. <laughs> nope, not happening. The other show title, uh, Throw Your Chromebook Into the Ocean. Not really. Uh, also now sponsored by Duracell. Um, guys, uh, uh, LB, Will Rutherford, I never call you your real name. William. Yes. Yes. Uh, where can people find you? 
Wow. And the things that you do. You can, of course, find me at WrestlingMayhemShow.com right here on the Sorgatron Network. You can also find me on Twitter at DJ Lunchbox. Lun- huh, at huh. DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> uh, you, can, uh, you can find me on Tumblr at ThoughtfulRiot.tumblr.com. You can find me on the regular internet at ThoughtfulRiot.com where I do all my, uh, my, my writing, my haiku, my poetry, things like that. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I mean, you can find me if you look hard enough. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Pinterest. I mean, I'm I'm all over the place uh, here and there, and and uh, trying new things every day. Excellent, excellent, Chachi. You're doing things. You got your Chachi twenty. Yep, the Chachi twenty. Uh, start taking guesses around seven seven thirty every morning, mm-hmm. um, Monday through Friday only. I'm not waking up that early to do it on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> um, I'm not at work, therefore the day is going to be good. There you um, go. But uh, yeah, uh, Chachi says .net is coming back. Um, insert coin is there, uh, and Twitter. Uh, I'm all over it. Awesome, and of course, check me out, MikeSorg.com, Sorgatron.com. I did put the post up, Chachi, that you and Norm talked me into last week. I know, I saw. So uh, no donations for it, but I haven't really had time to really push it with uh, everything going on for the WrestleCon. Well, uh, people don't want to pay to see you wear Google Plus if they can't wear well, it. Well, did you read the article? It's like, no, you know, I, I guess did. it'll be a sharing situation here, and uh, everybody's in on it. So if you well, yeah, but they're not going uh, to. Uh, what I, they're probably thinking that well, he's not going to let me take it home for the night or anything. So yeah, I don't know. like what. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't explicitly say a thing uh, uh, of that nature. Yes, there'll be a loaner program. Uh, <laughs> lend me your firstborn child, and you can take him home for the yeah. night. One thousand uh, dollars down, and I'll let you borrow it for the night. Yeah, why the hell not, right? Um, I don't know. I threw it up there. I, I just kind of had fun writing it and stuff. So go check that out, Sorgatron dot com. Oh, really... wait, hey, put it back on me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is what happens when you put your uh, Avengers movie theater glass in a dishwasher. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> so if, if someone has a an Avengers movie theater glass, that's probably me. Is that, is that a similar make of these kinds of cups? Yeah. All right, because I'm definitely not ruining this after $9 paying for a cup <laughs> at a thing. And I just picked up a WrestleMania one, too. So that is a... Uh, so, yeah, if, if someone has one of them laying around and wants to give it to me that'd be great <laughs> so you can get a new one all right um that's it awesome cast guys thank you to uh and again awesomecast.com uh thank you to our awesome chat room that's been hopping all night uh and, and making me laugh uh you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA? Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh, and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh-based, so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at PittsburghOnVideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you, wherever you are around the world. That's PittsburghOnVideo.org. Go check it out. Do Folks, it. I'm DJ no. Lunchbox, no. and this is Awesome Cast. Oh. You're surprised to see me here. That's right, I'm usually on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, but uh, I thought I'd drop in a little early this week. How's it going, everybody? Wait, did we start? Now we did. Hey! Oh, did we? <laughs> Sorry. Didn't know we actually started.